right, you guys, welcome to another sunny day up here in the canyons in Southern California. My name is Marcus, as always, you're watching Roads on Travels, uh, and here we are, finally. After years of waiting, we are in a C7 Corvette Z06. It's got a supercharged LT4 under the hood, big V8, big displacement and a lot, a lot of power. 650 horsepower, 650 foot-pounds of torque. Oh my god. <laughs> So yes, I would prefer if this was a manual, we have a solution for that. Behind us is a C7 Corvette Z51 package with a 7-speed manual. So today is going to be a little bit of a comparison between a Z06 with Cup 2s and uh, the Auto versus a Z51 package with the manual. She got blood. I always loved the heritage of the car, a uh, classic American sports car. Started out kind of as like a cruiser kind of car and then eventually turned into a hardcore sports car and one of the halo cars uh, from America. So to see this car come to its evolution and where it is now and the package it is now in the Z06, uh, it's very interesting. The only other Corvette I've driven was a bored and stroked C6 Z06, putting down about 550 at the wheels, all NA. First of all, oh my god, all this car has done to it is headers, and it is the, the loudest V8 I think I've ever driven, or one of the loudest V8s. Throttle's very responsive, borderline twitchy to be honest, but I think it'll just take a second to get used to is all. So I am in manual mode right now, I'm in track mode as well, which stiffens up the suspension a lot. Uh, and as well, the exhaust is in open mode. Uh, you can also put it in stealth. Honestly, if you're on the highway and it was always this loud, that would not even be enjoyable. But out here in the canyons, downshifting, upshifting, it's a good time. So I am using the paddles, a little bit of a delay. Honestly, it's not. Like it's passable, you just have to anticipate when you're gonna need to shift before you actually shift because it's not instant. And the, the auto, when you're in drive, it doesn't really do a great job of finding out what gear you wanna be in and kinda of holding revs and stuff. Like it's hunting for gears constantly. It's kind of underwhelming to be completely honest. I mean, obviously if you're just on the freeway and stuff in drive, it'll be fine. We're gonna put it back in a manual though. <laughs> the Corvette has deep roots as a simple car. Not much to break, just brute force and whatever ego is behind the wheel. But with the next generation mid-engine platform, I'm willing to bet this is the last vet with a dominant muscle car edge. This is a C7 Corvette Stingray Z51 package. With a nice sounding V8 engine, a lot of power, and automatic 
rev matching on the downshifts, which is something I've only experienced once before uh, in the Cayman GT4 in the Sharkworks car. Very smooth power from the V8s. All of the noise is coming from back there. There's, you're not getting any induction noise or anything from the front. Same with the Z06, to be honest. You don't really hear the supercharger whine in that car. Really quick to rev up like that. Like, that's just barely blipping the throttle, and you can get up to kind of four or 5,000 RPM uh, with little to no effort. Steering's nice and progressive. Definitely a lot nicer than that uh, S197 GT500 steering. I did not like that steering. definitely does not get up to speed nearly as quick as the Z06, but not disappointing. It's got plenty of power and this will get you into trouble. I love the manual. I absolutely love the manual. You have to have the manual. Honestly though, in the Z06, I cannot imagine that Z06 with this transmission. Like I can imagine it, but I can't imagine surviving it. Pretty much all third gear here, it just dives in. The front end just digs in way more than I would have expected. Being from Canada and coming to the States, the cultures are very different. Yes, they're, it's both North American, they're very similar, but the cultures are very different. Uh, and when we come down here, I like to experience America. American roads, American food, American cities, American people, and American cars. The Corvette has, and probably always will be, the staple Halo American car. Yes, there's the Viper. I personally identify more with the Corvette uh, in terms of an American icon. If you're an NA purist, the Z51 is your car. Sure, it still has 460 horsepower and 50-50 weight distribution, but what about the boost? The Z06 aero bits draw you in and then you're smacked in the face with another 200 horsepower and the option for carbon ceramic brakes. Yes, enough to brag to your friends about that one time your car lapped the Nürburgring just 0.9 seconds behind a Porsche 918. <laughs> what we're going to do right here is do a quick 0 to 60 run for you guys because I know that's something you probably want to see and hear. All right, here we go. We're just going to mash it. Ninety miles an hour. <laughs> That's ridiculous. All right. These Z06 is hold on. There's 12 miles an hour. That's as fast as we need to go today. <laughs> From a styling perspective, I know a lot of people don't like Corvettes. The C6 ZR1 is a very good looking car. That in particular with like the gunmetal wheels and everything comes together really nicely. But the C7, a lot of people don't like the back end. When it first came out, the forums were going crazy about how they, they got rid of the circular lights. Oh no, holy crap. The worst, right? <laughs> um, I don't mind it. I think the Z06 looks, looks completely badass. It looks ridiculous, comical, uh, to say the least. I mean, the interior on this is light years ahead of the C6. Absolutely night and day on the interior. Here's the thing. The Corvette's one of those cars that have always been, and if you, you know this, then you know it, but it's always been the bargain sports car, right? Um, crazy power, 650 horsepower, 650 torque, is no joke, that's ridiculous supercar numbers, but there's always gonna be sacrifices. And previously, like with the ZR1 and the C6 ZR1, it was completely like the interior, uh, the plastic panels everywhere, it was very clear where they took the sacrifices. Um, with the C7, yes, prices are a little bit more, and the sacrifices are less apparent, which is super cool, because now this can really, truly compete with a lot of the heavy hitting European stuff uh, and hold its own in pretty much every aspect. I mean, this thing 
Uh, the downforce, as you can see, the wing back there, uh, actually slower in a straight line at very high speeds, 150 miles an hour or above, than the C6ZR1 um, because of all that downforce. Definitely likes the big sweepers. Uh, turning's really good. Got some nice meaty rubber, that helps as well. But you get the sense that if you give it a little bit too much torque on the exit, then it's just gonna get away from you real fast. As well, if you try to kind of trail break into a corner, it might get a little bit twitchy. Honestly, it's kind of all over the place. <laughs> kind of freaky, but fun. All right, here we go. Okay, coming out of a corner, 5,000 RPM. Yes, the Corvette is an icon. Uh, a lot of people feel that with the C7 generation that they kind of started losing that traditional Corvette uh, feel. And a lot of people, for better or worse, a lot of people actually enjoy the fact that the older Corvettes are just like extra shitty. Like <laughs> the interiors fall apart, they rattle, um, but that's why you buy them. You get them for a track car. Nobody's really dailying Corvettes, I feel like. Uh, you could totally daily this, the C7, but older Corvettes, nobody really dailied them. So I feel like a lot of the community, the hardcore Corvette guys, got a little sour uh, or bitter when the C7 came out and it was like better at being an actual car. Because cars, you, you know, you drive them on the street. <laughs> Not every day is like this out in the canyons. Unlimited front end grip. A little bit more body roll in this car than the Z06, for sure. It's definitely a lot softer than the Z06. Um, but in terms of just raw driving dynamics, they feel very similar. It's not an AMG in here, absolutely not. If you think that America has gotten to the point of the Europeans in terms of interior alone, they still have not, absolutely not. That's not even a question. Um, but that being said, uh, this feels like much more close to a European spec interior on like a high-end $100,000 car than it was previous. Oh man, this, honestly, this one right here with the manual and the NA uh, has completely sold me on the C7 Corvette. The Z06 is nuts and all, but I would want a C7 with a manual because controlling that exhaust note with your left and right feet is one of the best experiences you can have in a sports car. It's one of those cars that you just upshift just to downshift and rev match again. And that is one of the best experiences you can have in a car in my opinion. Uh, what really makes this car, it's a sensory car. Like it's not, it's not a lap time car necessarily, although very fast. It is an experience car, it's a weekend car, and that's what America does so well. Um, you know, work your nine to five, American dream, uh, job during the week, and then out on the weekends, you have all the control in the world and you have freedom. When comparing the Z06 with the 8-speed and this car, it is no question I would give up that 200 or so horsepower for the manual. If, like, between these two specific cars, I would take this one. It's the manual. You cannot beat a manual. You just can't. That being said though, the Z06 is like scary fast. This is fast. The Z06 is scary fast, properly scary fast. So thanks guys for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe on YouTube. Uh, hit us up on Instagram at Road to Travel. We got a weekly podcast as well. See you next time.